Let me start right away. Uh, I'm Sandy Schubert, and I want to talk to you about the new OEF toolkit um, from the TDF. It's not so new, by the way. Um, it's from uh, from Sam Eichstrom and uh, joined eventually with, with IBM, was at Apache Incubator, and now finally joined uh, the toolkit. So, what's about the what's the OEF toolkit about? The toolkit is not a silver bullet, but it's a tool, and um, it's something that is definitely used for ODF. And I give you a few ODF basics here just to know. Um, of course, ODF is just a zip, okay? If you exchange the uh, suffix from ODT to zip or ODE, uh, ODS or any suffix of it, you, you might get the, the XML, the nine time pictures, and some content um, table that's called the manifest. And another thing that um, that some should aware is because it's just a toolkit, I mean, it's about ODF, ODF is specified, and the specification is like a blueprint, it's like a cooking recipe where, um, where if we do everything right, um, you always get valid documents from it, okay? So the first tool that you might know is the validator. Um, it's even, um, even uh, hosted by the GDF, and um, you can get it out of the box as a web application archive, and uh, you can call a command line, or can, you can have running a local Tomcat to uh, upload your files there and uh, validate it. So that's so that's very useful. Um, other use cases aside of the validator is um, just a minor case, just to mention it, is to run XLT, uh, XSL transformation, and some script files directly on the ODT. Usually they're running only on the on the um, on the XML, but you don't have to unpack them. Okay, so it's um, just a fancy step that uh, somebody just wrote once. That's some. But the main thing is to to edit a document, and it was invented that the customer wanted to have them serve on the cloud and do some very fast work with Java with not not many knowledge uh, to um, with, they don't need a layout and they just want to extract data usually for um, translation for instance or insert. that's the usual use cases. And what's new is the collaboration that is possible to be used as a backend. And it started with using version uh, 1.0.0 and um, we are about to release a 0.9 um, this week actually. Alright, so what's the architecture? The architecture of the is the uh, Alcazaba for Unreal, Unreal. But um, what's the architecture? What's all about? What can we do good here? So the, the main thing that we I think a very good thing where uh, the OLF, OLF toolkit uh, stands up from others is um, the OLF DOM, which is being generated with a lot of as lot of, as much as possible from the specification. And I want to dive there a little bit into it because I think we can even improve and get even better results there um, from the generation, but even um, improve the specification. So if we just take a look at the, the upper source code generator, I dive into this now. Um, the source code generator consists of, let's like, say, three parts. The first part is the grammar, which is um, um, which tells you um, what XML is allowed and what part. Yes, for instance. Um, the office body has to be there, and there have to be a text file. There has to be a children called child called office text, and uh, and so on. But it's quite complicated. It's uh, 18,000 lines of code and 600 elements and 1,200 XML attributes. So it's a, it's a lot of things. So we thought it might be good if we generate some Java code um, to um, a DOM type DOM code, so developers can um, just look at the source code by um, auto-completion uh, would know how um, they can create the XML that is valid. And to do so, we loaded the XML into a, a grammar reader. We didn't want to invent our own reader, so we reused some open software. And the nice thing of this is it can uh, read many uh, grammars. So we reused the XML multi-schema validator um, for reading it. And then, of course, we wanted to generate from that, um, this is the data. And from that, we wanted to write, uh, create Java sources. Um, for this, this uh, we use a template engine. Usually, they created HTML files from databases, at velocity. Um, template engine means right, you uh, you write the the Java base class, and then there's some, some Java code and context it 
just like uh, loops and uh, conditions, and so you can um, create arbitrary um, files. This is just happens once to the compile time, but this was not sufficient. Um, you, for instance, when there was the question, um, is a paragraph, can a paragraph be nested, right? So, is it possible that in any valid document, a text P can be found um, somewhere uh, beyond? Um, because usually, a document is basically just a sequence of either tables or paragraphs, right? And so, and this is very hard to tell because um, that when you look at the source code, this is like, this, uh, it's very small, but this is just the table, right? And, um, and it's going on and on and there are all links or something. So, um, what we would do then, or what I um, took over was, um, I dived into that and loaded this into a graph database. When you can't see so much, but it looks like a star um, thing and um, a star picture. But what I did is, um, from the multi schema of my data, I loaded the graph database to answer um, this very table. Uh, to answer the question if the table can be nested, then because then I just dive a little bit into it. Here, the red are the um, are the attributes of the table, and it's just the XML table table with children XML elements um, and all in between, right? And this is, should not be much, but um, we can dive uh, dive further on, and this is also hard to read. Um, epsilon means nothing, and if it's choice, nothing, then it's an optional, and we can remove the boilerplate and have sequence, um, like saying there have, uh, there's, can be a soft break, and but there have to be a table row, okay? But ahead of that might be a soft break. This is what um, what can be read here, yes. And from that you can generate your source code. So if somebody, for instance, enters a soft page break then um, the source code should automatically check, oh, if there's already a text table row inserted otherwise in front of it, if it's otherwise inserted or otherwise appended, that's what I meant to say. Yes? So, and because, you know, there's a root of land, a children, so there's a tree, and uh, you know, you can traverse trees quite easily, so you can handle it in a, in a, in a, in a, in a graph, in a data structure, quite easily and can answer yourself um, these questions and, and share these questions with others, right? Otherwise, you just take a look at this very huge uh, text file. So, that's the thing, the new thing since 1.00. Um, I inserted some Apache table pop graph and um, just to get a better um, instruction, a better um, feeding for the data. But I haven't answered the nested question yet, but um, and I haven't um, improved um, the, the generation like the sequence what I showed you just before is still only handwritten. It's um, if you instant, at this point a soft page break will be appended unless somebody did it manually. Yes. Okay. So, so there's room to improve. So this is the source code generator. Just to mention it, um, that's what we have. And to continue the picture, there's the validator. It's using the OEF DOM. And the XLT runner, this is the thing that um, that is um, yeah, running the XLT from the script. And the simple API, there was some IBM for, that was joined again, but so, so much duplicated uh, code that we just simply dropped it because IBM did not support it and uh, yeah, and it's um, yeah, we, we I don't uh, we don't like we decided <laughs> that it's time to um, to drop it simply. Alright, so that's the basic architecture. To put it in a different way for the algorithm, we have three layers which are very similar to specification. There's one specification only for the package that specifies the zip and how it's encrypted and signed. And there's, um, it could be reused by PDF or um, the one and zero specification of the package was reused by EPUB, by the way. Unfortunately, they uh, forked them for, uh, for the next version. And the next one is only about the XML. And the next thing, which is another thing totally unspecified is the semantic, the user semantic of the structure. Because we all know there's a table, we all know there's our columns, that, and we, we know that we all um, insert this paragraph and make them uh, make text bold. But although we are doing this at every ODF and also other applications like Docbook, um, there's no common sense on it. Okay, and. Um, I was once a user who said, oh, get away with the XML. I don't care about the XML. I just want to work on the semantic level and want to say, open the text document, add the paragraph, add the text, 
and I, I'm totally fine with that. So my wish and hope in the future is to uh, make this more a private layer, like an implementation detail that's ODF, but on the, on the higher level, it's um, a very common sense about the things that the user um, uh, is knowing, okay? Just keeping that in mind, that the semantic layer is uh, something that's unspecified. But the nice thing is, with the graph, you can now um, annotate and mark like, things like a table. You can express, uh, explicitly point out what XML belongs to, like a puzzle piece, to, to different uh, semantics. Okay, why do we need this? Okay, first of all, why do we have a property, okay? Let me say, um, we have a problem of collaboration, okay? You heard um, Clover Online said the, the name gives an, in, um, an hint, it's only working online. Why is it only working online? Why is that problem? So, uh, it comes, the software comes from the 80s, and in the 80s there's only one person working on a machine, we were exchanging four pictures, and sometimes we had to know the model. It was everything working fine, we were loading the full document, saving the full document, yes, that's fine. But nowadays, um, we have smartphones, so we ourselves have multiple um, machines, smartphone, laptop, and we want to exchange documents. And um, if you want to have one true final document, like this is my application, or this is my contract, or this is, this is the thing we all agree upon, right? Then you have to take the other's copies and merge them back. It's like software development. There's one single repository where you commit your changes, but you work on your local copy, right? Uh, but we have a merge problem. A problem because the key question is if you merge it, you want to take one thing, you have to ask what have you changed? But there's no way that we can explain it because we only have the full final document, we only have the zipped core source copy repository, and we're currently as we're called collaborating as clever as source code developers was were zipping their GitHub and giving them to the other by zip by email and saying, Okay, now you can edit, and yeah, it doesn't work out. It's, 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 it's totally painful. So what we want is we want to um, exchange changes. We want to like in commits there are diffs of line base, but that line base doesn't work for us because we are XML, we are zip, and it's it's horrible. So we have to go to a different abstraction level here, and um, that's the semantic that I talked earlier about. So um, the question is, how? What have you changed? And this can be answered by um, by defined changes of adding, deletion, and modifying of these semantic things like. Um, the speaker office now have a new second paragraph and it's dispatched to other people and it just dispatched the change like you would change a uh, dispatch commit and uh, would not zip the full document of the, or the source, repository, source repository or the, um, the word would now say it's an ODF change, right? Oh, I make the fourth uh, paragraph blue and they would now merge everything and would work with the, uh, with the same copy or the same, um, yeah, they would have a unified copy, um, um, a single document that is identical. Three documents, copies that are identical, I think. Okay, anyway. So, um, wouldn't it be nice if this was working? And there's something, um, I tried to release a beta this week as well. Um, I think I worked about three, more than three years on this, and others as well. Um, I was funded for the prototype fund to, to finish this and started working with Open Exchange on that. And it's very simple. Think of this as a black, no, it's a green box. And you put in a document and it's been transformed to a sequence of changes. Like a user would have added the document uh, thing by thing from the top to the bottom. Okay? But why do we need this? Because, as I said, the main question is what have you changed? And this is entering the change the document into the realm of changes. By the way, it's just CLS and JSON for dispatching. And the next thing is you can also merge things back. Okay? So um, we have something now, a black box and the tool, we have a toolkit, the upcoming version, um, where we can dispatch changes on all the other level, right? When we have defined this, uh, the semantics things. And so why is this good for? Because if we have this in the back end, we can make any arbitrary application editor an ODF application. So um, let's start with LibreOffice of uh, uh, again, right? Um, but let's start with Emacs. Emacs is a text editor. Um, who, know, who knows Emacs? Emacs? Okay, I feel like knows Emacs. Wait, guys. Anyway, Emacs, just text, okay? But think about it. Think about every line is a paragraph. And, of course, they have text. You can load any 
full free to document like specification or your contract, but only the you use it in the backend and you get all the changes, but you only move the changes with the text in the paragraph to the editor, right? And every change now is being tracked and merged back into the full document without breaking any of the features that exist. With other words, you can edit a full feature document with Emacs without destroying it. Well, remember, our way is to load the document fully in the document into the model, right? And filtering all the features we don't know, unfortunately. And later, we save everything. And this is also horrible. I have an 80 pages document or 200 pages, and saving. I constantly save because I don't want to save my, uh, save my data, and it took so long, and it's ridiculous to save always everything, right? It's like, it's like same repositories. So, this is basically what I told in Tokyo, but I did a little work, and I did a little example, just a little example, okay. So, um, there's some web editor called the CK Editor 5, and it's just an HTML editor. And you can clone it and build it, and then you can take a look at the um, example. And in the notes, by the way, is the little snippet that you might add it into the index at the HTML, you know, because these guys are from Warsaw, Poland. And last year I took a cheap bus, going to Warsaw, met them a day, we, we talked a lot, and they gave me the hints how to, um, to listen to some events to get their, their Events there because one thing is very special the CK file because uh, from four to five they changed the internal model. They said we have so much problem with coloration and change tracking and under redo. We we move from the full featured document to a list of changes. So they know changes. They are aware of change. And I thought, wait, that's cool. All I have to do is get the changes and translate it to my changes, because they all know the same, they all know the same thing like um, paragraphs, tables, and so on. So, but I'm very, in the beginning, just a second please, so I'm, I show you. Um, I'm just listening and um, looking at what they're doing. So this is the um, CK Editor 5, okay? And when you download and build it, you get something like this. I uh, just edited a very good sample. And if you, this is a Chrome, you go to um, F12, you got the console, right? And I'll show you. Um, and when I press here another one, you see there's something coming up. And I also go for a minute. I, so I make two operations, and they, there's something happening over there. They, they collect the operations, okay? So let me first show you the source code. This is the, the engine thing. I have it in my lock here. Um, you just have to insert this here somewhere. Yes, uh, I have to learn JavaScript myself. But, <laughs> but this is quite easy, and I'll assist you if you want to. But you can play around and see, and now I'll show you the... Um, so the slides again, because I just recorded what I just did. So you see, there's a lot of, let's say, boilerplate that I'm not interested in. But I'm interested in... Um, I inserted... Oh, I inserted now an X, sorry. It wasn't one. <laughs> That's a problem. Okay, there's the data that I inserted. It's in, called insert operation, and it's at a position 06. They start obviously counting with the arrays. What's the first paragraph and the seventh sign? In, in my world, I do it like XML. When we say the fifth thing, we, we take a five, right? It's more to human, uh, human sense. So, um, so anyway, we, we have to translate these operations and all the F operations, yes? And here's the other one. They, they start and end um, at the fourth character and end an A character, and make it be okay? So, um, this is something I can really deal with, okay? So, the next thing what I'm doing is I'm, I'm buying a building plugin and collecting all the data and send it to a local or a cloud server with my um, operation line, okay? And now, with this, I can even load a full ODF document into this editor. I can see only what, what the editor is aware of, right? But I can edit and merge it back and it will not break the document. And I have a standalone open source editor. Um, and yes, I have I can even work offline because then I can put Git in the uh, big M for instance. Uh, this needs some work uh, and uh, work on branches and yeah. 
that is something that um, Kula Bora Online is missing the cement level on dispatching these changes, right? And um, hopefully, um, there have been some guy work being done in a Libra office, a Libra is uh, doing this as well. So, um, I'm coming to an end as well. There's a website for the OLIF toolkit. This is basically the copy part of that one. This is the usual GitHub thing, the, the main branch. Whenever we push something, it's getting up. Um, the sources are here. Um, the latest sources, um, please catch me uh, uh, because I haven't, I'm working on another branch currently yet. Um, so the changes are not yet there, right? Uh, but uh, they will be hopefully end of the week within a 100 beta. And um, yes, the validator, as I said, and the specification documents. Um, there you find even the, the XML schemas and the HTML um, documentation, which is quite fine and easy to, to, to find things, yes. So, yes, I think that was all. It was. Okay, thank you for listening. Are there any questions? <laughs> oh, so I was laughing. <laughs> Um, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about. Uh, okay, go ahead. Okay. I repeat your question. I, I'm thinking about the usage of such toolkit. Uh, is it possible to uh, to check certain tags in the ODF format? For example, if I want to know, uh, for example, I, when I teach students to a uh, general document with certain uh, styles or certain features and uh, when they get their uh, files back to me I need to check one by one but is it possible to check certain tags uh, so that I know that yes he, he used the style or something like that yes so the question was is it possible that um, his students are using certain tags in an ODF document that would indicate the parts, if I can occur, uh, I'm saying correctly, that they have been uh, edited, right? So um, it is definitely uh, possible to use it. Um, the thing is, if you use currently LibreOffice, I believe if you um, you need to do some tricks. Otherwise, as I said, everything is loaded into existing model, and if your tags are not existing in the the, the model of LibreOffice, they will be. Um, they will be uh, dropped. So the, the workaround that's currently working is you use certain character styles. That's a way, that is what we are using in the audio specification to extract default values. <coughs> right? They are only written once in the specification and by XLT we extract them to, um, to get them into the, uh, um, and for the generation of the source code. Yes? So um, you can do it by styles and you you even can, um, if you use, uh, for instance, if you would, if this would be working with the CKL5, for instance, then you could only the changes back, right? You would, you would know exactly what the students have changed on often you for us an update, and then you can take uh, take a look at these changes and say, oh well, you use different format, okay? Or um, you can take a look at this. This would be very nice. And coming back to the original idea of this text. The text, that's the way how the common companies um, are using the live toolkit for um, template generation, right? The, I guess the mo most commercial um, use case I'm aware of is using templates with certain text within and they, they find it by a certain field or anything and, and then it's been, um, they insert some, usually they insert some, um, some data from a, doc, uh, from a database. Right, and generate something. Okay, but we can talk later um, and go more into detail. But I think it's possible. Yes. Any further questions? No. Okay, I've got three minutes so I've got a question. Uh, um, Michael, Michael. <laughs> so, what do you think? Um, is it possible to um, to get the semantics somehow? Or what do you think is of to everyone? But Michael is the one who works in this DC, right? I think the ODS specification is underspecified in terms of this semantic level. Okay, so 
but you know, there's there's just a few bunch of people working on it, just a few bunch, but they are hard working and there's a lot of work. So if I come up and say, hey guys, by the way, by the way, there's um, there's a whole layer under specified, like semantics. Like um, we need to define what is a table, right? And we also have to define what can be changed in a table, like is it a row, is it a column, um, is it a cell range, yeah, make it bold, blue, something, right? So um, like we define an ODF semantic user API and also the way how the API is being mapped to the XML change, okay? Because every time I do at table number three and insert row at number, f uh, number four, right? The XML should be uh, normalized, the same, okay? So we, because it only works when we dispatch changes, exchange changes, if we can uh, agree on how uh, our document looked in here, they have to look the same way. If I say to you, um, the millionth paragraph is red, the background color, yes, then you do it in a way that is totally defined, okay? And um, somehow, we, and hopefully, we can do it with a little bit of automation, right? Like a declare mechanism. With, really writing it by manually would be horrible, right? It's too many attributes, too many um, um, XML to, to get on the semantic level. But we need it because otherwise we're just zipping source repositories and changing those in there instead of doing real collaboration. So do you think there's any way to do that? I'm not sure I understand your question, but I think the answer is that it was previously uh, out of scope. Okay. So, um, Michael Stahl answered that um, if he answered my <laughs> if he answered the correct question, it's um, that it's uh, out of scope. Okay. It was out of scope. It was out of scope. We, we, we can decide to make it in scope, but we haven't done that yet. The, you you realize that I was not at the active members of the DC currently. Still, I'm the subcommittee chair of the advanced document declaration, and I thought myself, if there's no application coming to the subcommittee and helping to define this. I do the other way around. I, I write some toolkit where any editor can suddenly become an ODF application, like Emacs. Okay, Emacs might not have the Emacs community will not <laughs> run over the thing, but um, like Sega Edit 5, it's quite handy to to embed any uh, editor of ODF uh, to your to your website. I find it quite appealing. Okay, I think I'm running out of time. Thank you for listening. Um, let's meet later and have a chat. Bye bye.